The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is about two rival nationalisms, two groups that claim the land between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea as their own. And what makes it particularly difficult is that both sides see themselves as weak. Palestinians see themselves as weak compared to a much stronger Israel, and Israel sees itself as weak compared to a much stronger Arab world. At the same time, both sides see themselves as victims. The Palestinians see themselves as having been persecuted by the Israelis, and the Israelis see themselves as having been persecuted throughout centuries of anti-Semitism. The goal, as identified by the vast majority of the international community, is that there should be a two-state solution, the creation of a Palestinian state alongside an Israeli state. Palestinian politics are very complicated. First and foremost is the Palestine Liberation Organization. The organization established in 1964 that was meant to help give the Palestinians political voice. Within that is the main political party, Fatah, the secular nationalist Arab political party. Hamas, unlike Fatah, is an Islamist party that takes its ideological origins from the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. You have Fatah largely dominant in the West Bank, and you have Hamas in control of Gaza. There's another body, which is the Palestinian Authority. The PA was established by the Oslo Accords, the agreements between Israel and the Palestinians in 1993. The Palestinian Authority, which was meant to be a temporary body, has endured as the administrative body in the Palestinian territories to this day. Israel today is uh, led by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The government that Netanyahu heads is largely dominated today by people who believe that there's no possible solution to be reached with the Palestinians. They believe that it might be desirable to do so, but the most that they're willing to give up as part of a settlement falls way short of anything the Palestinians would accept. They also have a belief that right now they have no real credible Palestinian partner. They see President Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinian Authority as either too weak or too indecisive to make the historic compromises they believe are necessary. Now, of course, the Palestinians see the Israeli side as too strong and too rigid and therefore unwilling to make the compromises that would be necessary for a deal. There are really three things that are at the root of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. First and foremost is nationalism. Uh, you have two rival nationalist movements here. On the one hand is the Zionist movement, the movement for independence of the Jewish people in the land of Israel. And at the same time you have uh, Palestinian nationalism, uh, the belief that the Palestinians uh, are a people that are rooted in the land of Palestine that were the majority uh, when they were then uh, dispossessed by the uh, Israelis. There's a geographic dimension to the conflict. You have two groups uh, uh, that are vying for control over very small territory laden with two millennia of histories. Third is the religious dimension to the conflict. Uh, this is the Holy Land. It's the cradle of the three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. This makes this land very sacred and very uh, contentious. The United States has been central to all efforts to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The United States has a special relationship with Israel. That means it can help encourage Israel to take risks for peace, and it's the only country that has any real influence with Israel to encourage it to do so. But at the same time, because of the United States' role as an ally to many countries in the Arab world, it has the credibility to play a mediating role with both sides. The United States has a wide range of policies that it could pursue today. First, it could try an ambitious approach which seeks to end the conflict once and for all. This would entail returning to negotiations and trying to get the two sides to agree to all the final status issues, the issues that really are at the core of their dispute. A second approach would be to try for something much more modest, try to help create conditions that would improve the situation on the ground today, keep it stable, and help perhaps ripen the situation for resolution down the road. A third option, of course, is to say that the two parties are not prepared to take the difficult steps that are necessary for peace 
and that when they're ready, they should call us. Each of the three approaches have advantages and disadvantages. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is a challenge for U.S. diplomats, for U.S. leaders, indeed for the international community, and most importantly, for Israeli and Palestinian leaders.